whatever. An old joke from ancient Rome goes like this. A man who was rich but not very smart could not find his pillow. He told his servant to place a clay pot under his head. The servant protested that the pot would be hard. The rich man replied, well then, fill it with feathers. I guess dad jokes have always been around. Usually when we go to a museum or art gallery, the art we see there seems very serious. Marble statues, large canvases in ornate frames, or room-sized installations all carry a certain gravitas. But just like dad jokes, humor has been around in art for a long time. What makes something humorous? Humorists often set up exaggerated or absurd situations that are illogical or nonsensical, create funny scenarios. Using satire, comics poke fun at governments or the wealthy to bring them down a peg. Irony or puns are also components of humor. We are used to someone telling a joke or seeing cartoons that combine words and picture, but visual artists create comic juxtapositions by using images alone. Artists in ancient Egypt often used animals to stand in for humans or the gods in art that was meant to satirize their activities. On the other side of the world, in South America, similar images are seen in the art of the Mayan people. Ancient Greeks sometimes decorated pottery with strange pictures that stood in contrast to the usual buffed out Greek heroes that ordained most Greek pottery. In ancient Rome, the walls of the public toilets were often decorated with ribald or morally questionable scenes. The representing of absurd and illogical scenes in art continued in medieval times and throughout the Renaissance. After the printing press became popular, political satire in the form of cartoons became available to a mass audience. In Japan, from the 17th through 19th centuries, the Higa-san scrolls depicted scenes that would become known as the Fart Wars. What people find funny changes over time and by culture, but some types of humor never goes out of style. Modern artists don't shrink away from pointing out the hubris of human beings or the modern world. Many of the prevailing art movements of the 20th century include artists that did not take art or themselves too seriously. In the 1960s and 70s in Northern California, there were a group of artists that wanted to poke fun at the current seriousness of the art world. They were reacting against the angst-filled art of expressionist painting. Rejecting painting as the highest art form, these California artists used clay as their medium. The work of these artists helped elevate ceramics from the status of craft to that of art, even if they themselves would have rejected that claim. They would become known as the California funk artists and would influence many ceramic artists who came after them. There is something about clay that brings out the jester in artists. Maybe it's because ceramic artists literally get their hands dirty to make art. We're going to look at five ceramic artists who make art where humor is an important element. David Gaholi's career began in the 1960s when he studied under Robert Arneson at the University of California, Davis. He embraced the use of visual puns as a central element in his work. His sculptures often featured anthropomorphic frogs as the main characters, engaging in various human activities and scenarios. These frogs became a signature motif, and they served as vessels for his satirical and comedic commentary on art, politics, and popular culture. Patty Warashina is an American ceramic artist known for her innovative and thought-provoking sculpture. She emerged as a prominent figure in the West Coast ceramic scene, and played a significant role in the development of the California funk movement. Through her use of farce, Warashina explores a wide range of themes, including gender roles, cultural stereotypes, and the human condition. By employing exaggeration, Michael Lucero creates a visual language that challenges the traditional notions of ceramics and expands the possibilities of the medium. His sculptures blur the line between figuration and abstraction. Through his exaggerated forms, he engages viewers in a playful and thought-provoking exploration of identity, culture, and the human experience. 
One of the notable aspects of Kathy Butterly's work is her reframing of objects for humorous effect. She creates small-scale ceramic sculptures that challenge traditional notions of form and function. Butterly takes inspiration from everyday objects, such as vases, vessels, and bowls, and playfully distorts and transforms them into imaginative and unconventional form. Lee Su's compositions often juxtapose seemingly ordinary objects with unexpected twists. He employs visual puns, exaggerated proportions, and symbolic associations to create humorous narratives. His squished-up porcelain cans, decorated in the Ming Dynasty style, are stand-in symbols for our throwaway culture. Through his use of metaphor for humorous effect, Li Su explores a wide range of themes, including consumerism, societal norms, and personal identity. Humor is often used to soften a very serious message. These five artists, equal parts jester and social critic, continue the tradition of challenging the notion that humor is not a serious subject for art.